Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. Welcome to another exciting video where we'll be shedding light on the Dr. Pascal. Dr. Pascal is the 20th and final novel of the Rugen Mesquart series by Emile Zola, first published in June 1893 by Charpentier. Zola's plan for the Rugen Mesquart novels was to show how heredity and environment worked on the members of one family over the course of the Second Empire. He wraps up his heredity theories in this novel. It is furthermore essentially a story about science versus faith. The novel begins in 1872, after the fall of the Second Empire and the end of the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. The title character, Haskell Rugen B. 1813, is the son of Pierre and Folisip Rugen, whose rise to power in the fictional town of Parsons is detailed in the first novel of the series. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on plot summary. Pascal, a physician in Parsons for 30 years, has spent his life cataloguing and chronicling the lives of his family based on his theories of heredity. Pascal believes that everyone's physical and mental health and development can be classified based on the interplay between innateness reproduction of characteristics based in difference and heredity reproduction based in similarity. Using his own family as a case study, Pascal classifies the 30 descendants of his grandmother Adelaide Falk Tunt died based on this model. Pascal has developed a serum he hopes will cure hereditary and nervous diseases including consumption and improve if not prolong life. His niece Clotilde sees Pascal's work as denying the omnipotence of God and as a prideful attempt to comprehend the unknowable. She encourages him to destroy his work, but he refuses. Like other members of the family, Pascal is somewhat obsessive in the pursuit of his passion. Pascal explains his goal as a scientist as laying the groundwork for happiness and peace by seeking and uncovering the truth, which he believes lies in the science of heredity. After he shows her the Rugen Muswart family tree and demonstrates his refusal to sugarcoat the family's acts, Clotilde begins to agree with him. Her love for him solidifies her faith in his theories and his lifelong work. Clotilde and Pascal eventually begin a romance, much to the chagrin of his mother Folisid. She is less concerned about the incestuous nature of the relationship than by the fact that the two are living together out of wedlock. Folisid wants to keep the family secrets buried at any cost, including several family skeletons living nearby her alcoholic brother-in-law Antoine Muscourt and her centenarian mother-in-law Tante died. When Totaldi's brother Maxime asks Clotilde to come to Paris, Folisette sees this as an opportunity to control Pascal and access his papers to destroy them. Pascal suffers a series of heart attacks, and Clotilde is not able to return from Paris before he dies. Folisette immediately burns all of Pascal's scholarly work and the documents she considers incriminating. The novel, and the entire twenty novel series, concludes with the birth of Pascal and Clotilde's son and the hope placed on him for the future of the family. Brace yourself for an enlightening exploration of relation to the other Rugen Musquart novels as we dive into its profound implications. As the last novel in the series ties up the loose ends of the remaining family members lives, it is the only Rugen Musquart novel that has all five generations of the family represented. Furthermore, it is the only novel in which a representative from each of the five generations dies. Tant died, Anpon Musquart, Pascal Rugen, Maxime Rugen Sickard, and his son Charles. Adelaide Falk Tant died, the family ancestress has lived in an asylum for 21 years. She dies at the age of 105 after witnessing the death of her great-great-grandson Charles. Her eldest son Pierre Rugen, Folisit's husband, died two years before the novel opens. Her younger son Antoine Muscourt is a drunk. He dies during the course of the novel when his body, soaked with alcohol from a lifetime of drinking, catches fire a fictional instance of spontaneous human combustion that may be compared to the death of Crook in Bleak House. Here again Zola touches, in a horrific manner, on the consequences of the excessive consumption of alcohol, a theme common to the entire Rugen Muswart cycle. Clotilde's brother Maxime lives in a Parisian mansion. He is suffering from ataxia and is being preyed upon by his father Aristide Sackard Silurgent, 
who wants to get his hands on Maxim's money. Maxim has an illegitimate son named Charles, a haemophiliac, who bleeds to death on an afternoon visit to Tant Died. Maxim too dies in the last pages of the novel. In addition, we learn about the following in Rugen, Pascal's elder brother, is a deputy in the legislature where he continues to defend the fallen emperor. Aristide Sackard, Pascal's younger brother, exiled to Belgium after the fall of the Banque Universelle C. Largent, has returned to France. He is editor of a newspaper and is again building new and great businesses. After Maxime dies, he pockets his fortune for his own ends. Victor, Aristide's illegitimate son, has disappeared into the streets of Paris and left no trace see Largent. Sidonie Rugen, Pascal's sister, after a life of impropriety, now lives in Nunlick austerity as the financial mistress of a home for unwed mothers. Octave Moret and his wife Denise have three children, a newborn, a sickly daughter and a robust and healthy son. Serge Moret, a parish priest, lives in religious seclusion with his sister Desir. At the end of, his death is imminent. Hon Moret and her husband Rambord and Page de Moore continue to live in Marseille, childless. Pauline Quinn Lajoie de Vivre still lives at Bonneville, raising Lazare's son Paul, her uncle Chanty having died while Lazare, now a widower, has gone to America. Eichen Lamtia Germinal was arrested for taking part in the violence of the Paris Commune and sent to New Caledonia, where he is married and has a child. Jean Musquart La Terra, La Debicle has married and lives in a town near Parsons. He and his wife have two vital and healthy children and they are expecting a third at the close of the series. The hope for any enduring strength of the family lies here, as with Clotilde and Pascal's son. Get ready for a captivating exploration as we unravel the layers of publication and translation and their profound significance. The novel was translated into English by Ernest Advisatelli in 1894, reprinted 1925 and 1995, by Mary J. Serrano in 1898, reprinted 2005, by Vlad McKean in 1957, and in 2020 by Julie Rose with an introduction and notes by Brian Nelson, published by Oxford University Press. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from my channel.